Waniska, bon dia, good morning. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to be here with Erica on this Thursday morning. Uh, Erica, could you please introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, singe la de luan. Good morning, everybody. Erica Iskian, gut gus hinudi kiang. My name is Erica and also my name is Gutgus. And it's kind of funny because I always tell people that Erica is my German name because I don't have any English ancestry. Like, you know, people are usually, well, it's just the language too, right? So they're like, my English name is dot, dot, dot. Right. And I'm like, um, I'm, I come from Old Macedon, Haida Gwaii, uh, but I currently live in Skidigit and I've been living down here for, geez, almost five years. Feels like a long mm -hmm. time. Um, yeah, and I come from, we have a, a clan system, right, here on Hyde Y. So just to kind of situate myself in the world, like we're, um, we're a matrilineal society, as um, I think maybe it's just one touched on a little bit. So I come from the Quiundless branch of the Yakulanis people. Mm. And um, our ancestry goes, goes way, way back, right? It goes back, like, past, it goes back to the last flood. Um, and mm. so our family's lineage is like was one of the first raven clans on Haida Gwaii. Um, there's a whole bunch of them that were born um, from a supernatural being named Ulujet or Foam Woman. And she lived on a reef that was just under the water during the last flood. And she had all her children on the reef there. And, uh, and that's where we that's where we trace our lineage back to. Um, which I feel like, you know, in, in studying those things, it, it has really helped me because I know there's a lot of, a lot of us, especially who are, because you know, I have, like, my, my grandmothers are from Old Masset, <clears throat> and both of my grandfathers are what we call Yatade, the, they're Iron Men, so my, my mom's mom, or my, sorry, my mom's dad is, like, Scottish and Welsh, and my dad's dad, my opa, Archie, he's, uh, he came, he immigrated Mama, to Canada from you, Germany. Daddy. I see you, Nora. Oh, I have two daughters too, Nora and Eliza. Mama, One of them's two, this. so she's, she's pointing at this. our TV. I think you have a cartoon on, babe. Huh? And you're, yeah. Who's daddy? Uh, daddy's, he's working on his fishing stuff, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I got to spend some time, um, like I, I was born and raised here on Haida Gwaii. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of like, when I graduated, I was 18. And I guess I could start even from there, like my, uh, I was really lucky because I grew up um, at a time where we were allowed to learn our language in school. And we had elders in, in our classes all the time. And um, and I always felt really close with them because I, I had a connection with them, um, not only through school, but through the other language programs that were happening in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was a kid and my my mom's oldest sister, Elizabeth, was uh, has been um, very influential in bringing things together. So um, especially in those earlier days, when tensions were so high, like um, like our elders were not always happy to teach, and not always, you know, there was a there was a lot of tension in those days. She had to go through a lot with a lot of elders, and it's um, it's the nature of the work at the time, I guess. Like from, it's it's like wading through the aftermath of of like a war you know what i mean like just all the, the genocide that happened around here mm. oh yeah oh sorry i just have my phone propped up so hopefully it doesn't fall right down hi nora i hope it doesn't hi nora there you go sweetie pie there you go there you go oh now she's happy she's gonna play her little abc's game <laughs> the things that kids can do these days it's just crazy. Right? She's going to be three soon. Um, yeah. So I. So sorry. Where was it? Yeah. Was you were. Up. That was pretty powerful. Um, you were talking about learning your language in a time 
that was positive, but also wading through the the aftermath of of war, of genocide, of the legacy of mm-hmm. residential schools, and mm-hmm. and that that was also the climate that you were learning your your language. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think I was <clears throat> I was just so lucky that my my parents really took the time to explain to myself and my young. I have a brother too, Taos Tawson. Um, mm. He's like a documentary filmmaker on the uprise. Um, he, we both got to hear a lot of the history when we were growing up. And I think it's mm-hmm. like partially just naturally what my parents were really interested in and <clears throat> and that sort of thing. So we were really lucky that way. And I guess the other thing that <clears throat> is kind of um, uh, amazing to me is like, because my, my mom's mom went to residential school. My dad's mom didn't have to go to residential school like because her um, people started to catch on so quick, right? And so when they knew the Indian agents were coming, some families brought their kids way out of town, like hours and hours on the boat out of town when they knew the Indian agents were coming to take kids from the reserves. Um, and so my dad's mom, my, my nanny Liz, um, she just passed in March. She didn't have to go to she didn't have to go and so it was really interesting right um there's just so many dynamics though still like and then my mom's mom went to residential school she went to a couple of them um and one of her sisters actually passed away there at alert bay Mm. and it's just crazy like that whole scene like when i think about all the all the trauma that was endured there and everything like it's just sad right and then Mm -hmm. and then to learn about all those like the nutritional science experiments that they were doing on Vancouver Island up um like I just think about my nanny and how her she had osteo rheumatoid arthritis um Mm -hmm. and I'm like once I learned about the nutritional experiments it kind of made more sense like why (laughs) her body just deteriorated so quickly in the end of her life because I think that through her years of being um at school that there the kids were so malnourished there's not a there wasn't enough for them right and then there's like yeah there's just so many facets but anyway so my my parents um grew up kind of like in that real tough wake of alcoholism that strong um neglectful alcoholism i guess and like um so lots of bad things happened you know and to my parents when they were kids and it's just mind blowing somehow mm-hmm. some way my mom was only she was just about 19 when i was born and she had chosen a year before that to be to be sober and at the time i think that was you know not lots of people were doing that at the time that would have been <laughs> almost 30 years ago um and so it's amazing to me that I got to that I got to grow up in a home where there was no alcohol in our home. There was no cigarettes. There was no marijuana. There wasn't any of that. And um, and I feel like it was such a huge opportunity. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. between that and then being actually provided with our teachings from my parents, like right. they really always emphasize things like language. My mom. Like I can literally remember just being this little kid and listening to my mom and she was crying and she was talking about the nannies and she was like, you know, just talking about how deeply important everything that they know, everything that they understand, like how important that is for us to 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 also know and to, to ask them um, nice questions, to have the conversations come out, right? And to mm-hmm. to get some of that um that sacred knowledge that are in our traditional ecological knowledge and all that stuff to, to kind of bring it out. And um, so I've been really lucky that way that my mom loves elders and she always <laughs> wanted to be around them and she wanted me to be around them. And, and so um, I feel so lucky for that because it, it, sh- it sure helped me. Like I'm, I'm uh, sorry, I sometimes get messages and then I'm just flicking it up. Why? It doesn't really matter. <laughs> but, um, 
Sorry, where was I? <laughs> well, talking about your mom, I mean, when I when you shared a little bit about yourself, I thought it was so powerful. You said, I don't know if this is just, you know, if your spirit just speaks to you, like through you like this and I'd love to see more of your writing and you are an author. So I do want to hear about, you know, about that as well. But I always forget that. <laughs> right. I, I, you know, I creeped pretty hard, but it says you wrote, I have had a great fortune to grow up in a home with a mom who encouraged me, celebrated every new word I learned in our language. She sang our songs with me until our hearts were content and she connected me with the elders. So can you tell me a little bit about singing with your mom and learning to sing with your mom and how that influenced you as a singer? Oh my gosh, it's so funny. Um, yeah, I guess like, and then in our in our hideaway, like our, our my mom's sisters are my, are also my awa, my aulang, all of them, my, mm. my mothers. So my, my oldest auntie, she, I remember when we were visiting at my nani Audrey's house and, uh, and she was, she had gone away to school, blah, blah, blah. She came back and she was working so hard, right? Like diligently with the elders. And so my auntie was learning songs and everything. And and I remember she was singing this, uh, we have a wild man song. And I think that's mm -hmm. the first song I ever learned from her. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just so funny because she used to just sing it away and and uh there's just such a feeling right like it's like um it's so strong to sing i've been i've been singing for a long time and i it like i sang with my mom so much oh my gosh like it wasn't just um haida songs like every song wheels on the bus like raffi hey you know <laughs> like all the good stuff just feel, singing yeah so, and I mean, it's so nice when I, when I grew up then and learned about like the power of vibration and frequency right. and right. how Im incredible it is that we can, um, that we can express the energy from our hearts and like from, mm. from our spirits like that to me was like amazing. And, um, tell me more. <laughs> I really like to think about what you learned. <laughs> I really like to thank the Unity drummers in uh, Victoria because I went back and forth. I was like in Haida Gwaii. I'd come home and try to work at Rediscovery Camp, our youth summer camps. And uh, and it was great because I got to save all my money and then I'd have cash for when I had to go back to Victoria. But in mm -hmm. Victoria, my Uncle Glenn and my Auntie Katharina, they brought me to this, this Friday night uh, singers group. It was so great. They had, oh my gosh, now I'm going to forget it. There's a man, what is his name? The doctor that created the Round Lake Treatment Center. Hmm. He had, I don't oh know. my goodness, he's so amazing. Oh, I love him so much too. And because he has really <laughs> amazing things to say all the time. Now I can't remember. Anyway, so one of the days that I was at in Victoria, we went to UVic and then he was there. Doctor, his name will probably come to me eventually but he was talking about emotional competency oops mm -hmm. sorry Nora Nora don't bunk mama down <laughs> <laughs> um and he was saying that with every single heartbeat um we're it emitting health or or not you know what I mean like mm -hmm. and so he said when we become conscious of that we get to choose the energy that we feel we get to and we get to play a, a creative role in, you know, how we, how we feel. And mm -hmm. to me, that was amazing. And then of course, like just knowing and like getting to talk to so many different um, indigenous people about, about drumming and like, um, it's just how it seems to symbolize a heartbeat, like almost everywhere. And, uh, and I heard that too, even in the in the longhouses that we have, um, which we don't have on Haida Gwaii. Mm. It's amazing. We're like so, so innovative <laughs> and like forward moving in some ways. And then there's other things like we don't have a traditional longhouse to like potlatch in right now. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they say that the houses, the cedars that stand and hold the homes um, they say that it's an ancestor, like the house has a spirit itself. And then, um, yeah, it, it gets kind of like 
right into it because basically the through the doorway we're reborn every day every time you go out of your home basically mm-hmm. you're like being you're being born again into a new day and um and then in inside the the home inside the longhouse uh, the fire is like the spirit and the heart of of the ancestor and the drums are like the heartbeats right so that um that's just something that resonated with me and um yeah i just have been doing it for for a long time like and like i said right it goes back to my parents again because i was just a little kid and they used to bring me to there was an old masset dance group and uh like way back in the day i remember i used to just sit there and and listen and watch and and learn so much from all the people that came mm. um and then okay the funniest thing ever was <laughs> <laughs> was when my brother and I were young and we were play- we were sitting outside on the front porch of our house and my mom was at, uh, she was at a workshop here in Skittigit that she had come down to and she learned the feast song so this is how new these things are for us right like mm. um, things are are really coming back but it's a slow process like so uh, this must be at least maybe 14 years ago whatever and mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I know it would have been more than that. It would be like 24 years ago because I was like maybe six or something. I'm almost 30. Right. And um, and my mom came home and, and she had learned the feast song. And my brother and I were sitting on the deck and it was a nice sunny day. And and my mom came out and <laughs> she had her hot dogs. And she was like packing her <laughs> hot dogs for us. And, and then when she came to the door, she was like... <laughs> She was like, oh, I learned the hide a feast song and my brother and I were like, oh yeah, like what's that? And um and so she started singing it. And then and then but at that point I think my brother and I were holding our hot dogs and we were just looking at her. We were so captivated and, <laughs> and we gave our hot dogs back. Cause I was like, mom, you have to go back in and sing our hot dogs out. <laughs> <laughs> My mom, like, From then on. <laughs> and she like sang our hot dogs out to us on the porch. And that's like my first taste of uh, feast food <laughs> ceremony. Whoa. You like a hot dog. It's so Mama. funny. Hi, babe. Help me on my bed. It's so you pretty. You cleaned up your bed. You're such a good girl. You're so loud. Does Nora girl. like to Hi. sing? Hi. Uh, yeah, she does actually. Yeah, especially if she has the drum, she'll just bang around and oh, we're gonna start fighting too. They're really, they're really good. I'm gonna show a little photo of them (laughs) that I found on your. I love, I'm biased, but I love little sisters. (laughs) I have a sister and we're two years apart. And so I'm very biased, but I love seeing little girls growing up together, especially here. Can you tell me where they are and what they're doing? Where are we on this day? <laughs> We're in the forest. Oh, this is up near like Queen Charlotte. There's a there's a place called Hayden Turner. Yeah, and it's literally like that was literally one of the days where I was like, we just need the earth <laughs> like we right. need trees and we need rain and yeah you know we need our muscles to feel sore from there was some pretty big little hills in that little area trekking through the bush <laughs> <laughs> yeah. absolutely it's so helpful yeah yeah and what are they doing here Oh, horse tail. Oh my God, my dad's gonna be so happy. Um, <laughs> my dad's been, like I said, right? He's been teaching me about medicine since I was like mm-hmm. their size. He used to drive around to, to some of the the elders in our village and uh, mm-hmm. and he would just talk with them. And my, my brother and I were always just in the backseat of the truck, you know, and that was when there was no such thing as iPhones or not even an iPod. Like maybe we were lucky and he was playing his, classic rock 101 or something on the radio <laughs> or maybe, probably not lucky actually but um 
but yeah, we just, oh. and I remember because we used to sit there and be like, oh my God, this is taking too long. And like, you know, like it felt like it was a, an eternity when we were little, but mm. the conversations that we got to hear were incredible. Like, wow. Like I just remember him always being so appreciative um, when we were leaving the elders homes and he always brought the medicine to like yeah they he would ask them about harvesting and they would let him know so he could go out and do it Pudge was gone. oh dear where's your patrol oh my goodness sorry <laughs> very important that we find the paw patrol um there you go babe <laughs> paw patrol so, classic <laughs> i know <laughs> So he's teaching my girls there. That's just on the side of my house. Um, oh yeah, harvesting there. here. What are you, yeah. what medicines are you working with? Are they working with? It's horsetail. I don't know okay. how old of a medicine it is. Like I think my dad said it's probably like a really common old world medicine because it almost grows everywhere. It's like a non-vascular mm. plant that mm -hmm. reproduces through spores, which is, um, huh? hilarious for our gardeners because not hilarious at all but um <laughs> because it's actually such a battle i'm only laughing because i had to like dig up so much horsetail like a couple months ago right and, yeah um it's very prolific but they say in the old days it used to be this like 40 foot giant tree thing and I don't know why it's getting smaller, but that's what they that's Wow, what interesting. Yeah, and so it's really good for your your hair and your skin and teeth and nails. Mm. It's a real strengthener, but also for... Oh. Right. I can, I'll help you soon, okay? Sure. Thank you for waiting. <laughs> um, oh yeah, so he loves it. Um, and it's really good for like, what do you call like our nervous system like it right helps to build nerves but also things like cartilage in our bones like it's a it's a real bone strengthener yeah hello horsetail i know it's a <laughs> strong way yeah <laughs> and here strong you, would, you can just cut it down and dry it and it's like got a lot of silica in it so you can mm. it's like um it's so strong some people use it like a what do you call those little woolly like when you're scrubbing dishes some right i know what you're talking about <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay wow it has a lot of different uses mm -hmm. i have another so can you tell me a little bit more about the sacred knowledge keepers group oh yes, i love that name really, it's so new it's um it's really I just joined it for the first time this past week. Yeah, this past week. And it's kind nice. of it's through, it's an, initi an, an initiative through our health center. So somehow, um, somehow we have funding. What's going on? Can you play your game? Or what are you going to do? Um, sorry. Okay, the health center, the health center has this funding from First Nations Health Authority here in Canada. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so they developed this thing called the Healthy Hydras Initiative, um, which I work through the local food to school program. We, we have a partnership there with the gardens at the health center. And then, and then the lady who runs the Healthy Hydras Initiative just kind of rolled me into the sacred knowledge keepers too. <laughs> Okay, I don't know what's going on. How going? Okay, just wait. Sorry, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> That's okay. We're in no rush. The day is young. Time is not linear. <laughs> um, we're going to be nice, okay? These are nice words. Um, maybe this one's broken. Um, I don't know how. Look, it's not really working. Um, so it's a there's a group of of nanis here in Skidigit, and Nova! they are Eliza. Mommy's talking out here. Okay, go see Paw Patrol in the in their room. No, it's called my room and Noah's room. Okay, your room and Noah's room. 
<laughs> this is my life. It's so fun. Um, <laughs> so yeah, sacred knowledge keepers. I think there's four elders. Um, real treasures. Hey, like wow. our real gems of um, of wisdom keepers. Mm -hmm. And so they're starting to gather. And I think it's still really new, like so new that we haven't even advertised our first um, our first outing. And so we're really mm -hmm. trying to work with them during the pandemic. It has to come mm -hmm. up, doesn't it? Um, uh, <laughs> So I we, we we had our first meeting on Zoom, or I joined them in a meeting on Zoom, and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. These women are like 70 plus years old, and they're and like they're sending you Zoom link invitations. Yeah. <laughs> it's just amazing. So, yeah, and they are so lucky because they grew up um, with with really strong connections here, and. So yeah, so that's going to be a really exciting initiative and mm. we're just trying to figure out right now exactly how it can work, right? Because there's like four of them. So it might look like me and a knowledge and a wisdom or a sacred knowledge keeper, but they kind of all want to come at the same time too. So it's kind of funny. Um, I guess, I think they all have a vehicle. Yeah. So, and then we're trying to figure out like how to involve the youth. Mm -hmm. um so that when like because right now we have salmon berries that are just growing all around skittigid and Masset and all around mm -hmm. Haida Gwaii mm -hmm. so the berries are coming out and the fish are coming mm -hmm. back to the rivers mm -hmm. and so they're just they just really want to um just to work closely with the young people and families mm -hmm. and basically anybody that wants to learn um some of the old stories and the teachings that we have about about our about our food, like they really were talking about how much respect you had to have for stuff. Like it really, really seems to always boil down to respect. Like mm -hmm. um, not to uh, like that we can't talk bad about food because the there's like a spirit in that right there's like an energy in talking bad it's mm -hmm. like a dark energy and so when you're like when you're talking about your own foods your your traditional foods and you you're using it from that frame of mind from that dark frame of mind it's really it's really damaging um to the spirit of the food is what they were saying because they said there's a spirit well there is yeah there's a spirit in in everything right like diane Brown was saying from the, her mom told her from the smallest insect to the biggest whale everything deserves the same respect because everything has a spirit and and that's kind of you know those are some of the things that uh that we really need to echo I feel like through our generations and and they're just really good reminders and I so I'm like so excited I feel so lucky and like blessed to have been asked to to help support their work um, mm. so that's going to be great yeah I'm really looking forward to that I think there was even mention of some videos and um, so hopefully those things will come together really nicely over the next couple of weeks because uh, yeah once the food starts popping up here it's just everywhere mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. so that's going to be fun can you so what what is your work with what does food sovereignty mean to you because i know that you work a lot with food and is it food yeah. with youth programs and getting youth connected to food and you talk about you know harvesting and preserving do you have a, a preserving and harvesting blog <laughs> or instagram account that would be cool i wish i could right? be that organized i kind of i usually just get kind of stuck in the work <laughs> Of course, and that's then, a good place to like, be. Uh, yeah, it's funny though, like, but I think maybe because we're going to get, we're hiring some students for the summer. I saw for, that. The local food to school. Yeah, for the local food to school right? program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also there's going to be some youth manager, like garden managing positions for the, for the youth though, as well. So mm -hmm. I'm going to have a really we're looking at like hopefully a really nicely stacked deck of amazing young people. And I'm hoping that 
that would be something that we could get into, right? Like just share yeah. share our work uh, everywhere on Snapchat, whatever. Totally. Uh, just to get the words going and that would even be a really dope comic book just like youth coming oh, in right. taking up these positions again you know <laughs> yeah awesome totally so food sovereignty is like um basically that we we thrived here on Haida Gwaii for thousands of years before there was ever anything remotely like a like the system that we live in now the food mm -hmm. system that we live in now right like for thousands mm -hmm. of years before the agricultural um and industrial revolution and revolution <laughs> yeah i know so um so yeah that's basically what it means to me like to kind of like i i always try to center myself pre-contact <laughs> you know what i mean sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's harder and and uh and so yeah like what what did we eat here because a lot, a lot of times it feels like all we ever ate was fish right you know what i mean like that's what people talk about um a lot often so it's like oh yeah like okay we ate a lot of fish and like what else and berries of course right like berries mm -hmm. everybody loves berries so right. they eat lots of berries and then um then there's like clams and crabs and and octopus and the herring row on kelp and you know Whoosh. and then i got really curious about about greens too like like what are people eating for greens and and so yeah it's been really interesting that way like i actually i'm i'm really glad that i took this like holistic nutrition class i got to study oh, cool. herbalism yeah i got to study herbalism um at pacific rim college in victoria mm -hmm. and it was there that it just fleshed everything out of my brain like it made it so crystal clear to me wow. um and then yeah like just how integral nutrition is to our well-being mm -hmm. and um so that just drove the point right home for me like so I always have tried to eat well, like I, I veered off for a while and now um, I'm really glad I got this job actually because it it totally just re-centered and refocused me, right? Like personally mm -hmm. as well as like, yeah, like local food is the most important um, resource that we have really. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. And how, how can I get that to, into as many, uh, to as many children as possible. And so through the local food to school program, um, we have gardens that are going and they say we had gardens here for a long time like mostly in the old days we just grew potatoes and tobacco and stinging nettle but you know what's insane is that stinging nettle literally has like a to k vitamins it has like okay. every vitamin. it literally has like every vitamin that we need wow what did you think when you first realized that in the herbalism world like when you learned about your medicines that you maybe knew in a different way and then you learned some of these things, what was that? Is that what you mean by it all came together? Yeah, I guess so, eh? Like, yeah, like, um, it was so interesting, but it was, it was also kind of a struggle because it was like uh, Western herbalism mainly is, but then there's also traditional Chinese medicine and mm. Ayur Ayurvedic medicine from mm. India. Um, so we got to learn about like this, those three streams and how, how they're so well established. Like traditional Chinese medicine goes back thousands of years and same with the, the same with Ayurveda, right? And same with the Western herbalism is like the old world knowledge of, of the people in Europe, the mm -hmm. indigenous people of Europe. And so, um, so there wasn't very much emphasis there on, on like, on Canadian or like um, local herbs here, which was funny because myself and a lady from, from way up north, like Yellowknife area, she, she was in my class too. And we were kind of like, oh no, there was three of us native girls there, yeah. And uh, so we kept trying to to bring it back to that, right? Like, what about this and what about that? And they're like, well, that's like a whole nother 
program. <laughs> you know, <what> I mean? <laughs> like <laughs> that doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm almost grateful for it because I think that they really understand their their line. I guess there, like they do have indigenous peoples included, but it's not like they're not like trying to crank out like um, indigenous knowledge that way. I guess so. That's kind of nice. Right. I guess. Right. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. so that's all been, and then, so for the food, and then it's kind of funny too, because like we have, um, uh, a really big growing population of Mennonite people here. And so, oh, is that right? Yeah. It's been really interesting. And a lot of people I know have so many questions and like, even <laughs> I don't know very much about it, um, myself, but I work with them and they have really beautiful foods. So they're kind of um, one of our staples, but actually, okay. So this is another so reason why I'm like, I'm like so bent on food sovereignty and local food because somebody yeah. told me they were in a grocery store and it was $40 for a pack of like family ground beef. And I'm like, okay, that would be like $12 from the farm. Like in that sense, it, it makes sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then right. there's some elders here who can't even eat the food from the store because when they eat the food when they eat the meat at the store the antibiotics and the hormones in the meat like inflames their bones it like right. inflames their arthritis so they literally Absolutely. can't eat it yeah and so yeah. i'm like <sighs> no so, factory farmed meat is just full of you know, talking about energy, <laughs> and energy and toxins, right? Yeah, so that's part of my my driving force for sure. I, I supply local foods to 64 families here. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's been really awesome. So is how does it work? Do you have... Sixty-four families. Mm -hmm. um, so humble. I supply. Um, <laughs> um, the butter on, um, the, um, you could just cracker. put some little bit of butter on there, okay? Okay. She's so funny. She's such Erica, a little you? <laughs> she's so cute. Do you box up pre, like pre-packaged meals, or is it mostly veggies and fruit, or how does it work? Like, what does someone receive when they get one of these packages? And is it in is it in Skidigit and Masset or is it just? Mm -hmm. I yeah, it is. It's in it's in like every community on Haida Gwaii. Actually, I supply food to the local foods over to Sandspit as well. Like the the there's a little place you have to take a small ferry over to, and right. Um, so every community on Haida Gwaii is going to we we just got approved to run it for the summer. So awesome. That's amazing. That's breaking news, by the way. For Woo! <laughs> <laughs> we did it. <laughs> yeah. People care about that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, totally. So, yeah, they're getting like local beef and deer. When I have deer, um, Stop. Then I, You're just, the best. I, dole out, I dole out the deer. Yeah, it's so funny. I must have got like, like 50 deer last year. <laughs> I miss deer like, so much. There's no deer here <laughs> where I am. I so. There's some right. amazing, amazing fruit, right? Fruit of the Ooh, earth, so but there's lucky. definitely no deer. <laughs> right. I never even thought of that. That's too funny. Yeah. yeah. They have a, we have a little comment here from your friend Trent. My nieces want in on the interview. Better show them off. Oh, I know. Yeah, <laughs> they're so cute. <laughs> I know. I wish I had a better setup, but I'm, I literally have my phone propped up on a pillow. No, this is perfect. <laughs> feels like we're hanging out. That's what I love about this kind of technology is it actually just feels like we're hanging out and having a conversation across the world. True. Look at us time traveling. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Awesome. Hey, can you, oh, maybe we, back. Can you tell me a little bit about second there, the book? But it's fine. Um, your yourself as an author, the thinking? book or books? Oh yeah, local food to school. So we get all kinds of it. Like it used to be a meal program, um, and now it's just like a. Now we're we're just giving groceries. It feels a bit easier that way, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it gets 
more to the people I think that way too because it kind of supports the whole family then mm-hmm. yeah. yeah wow beautiful so what was the the book that you wrote was that around nutrition and food and food sovereignty or was that something something different entirely that connected um it was it about food i don't know i didn't even talk about food how come Aw. i wrote it it's called my first solo so mm. at our rediscovery camps um they're really isolated camps. They're they're positioned in some of our old village sites. One of them's at a place called Custa, uh, or like close to the close to the village of Custa, and um, it's like way out. Like it, when I was a kid, we had to go on the fishing boat. It took us four hours to get out there, and, mm. um, and then we get to live in long houses, and we get to chop wood and carry water, and we get to. Um, we get to wake up and with a hide a song every morning and we go for a run and a swim in the ocean every day. And we're always, you know, telling the kids about, or like we always were taught that it washes the town off us. And, and it's amazing. Mm-hmm. The ocean it has so many healing properties itself, like for our, for our aching bones and, and muscles and that sort of thing. Um, and it also has like every mineral and micronutrient available and our mm-hmm. skin actually absorbs it so it's literally healing the ocean so um i wrote it about 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 my experience there about when i was nine um i got to go to rediscovery and i think i was like a year early my dad just like advocated for me to be able to go to rediscovery and he always told me about his adventures there and like it, they're really safe spaces like they're like healing camps but you make it fun because it's a bunch of kids right right but it originally started through restorative justice actually through like prevention right. funds and that sort of thing because it takes a lot of money to run them every year mm-hmm. um so when you're out there you're out there for a few days and then you get to do a solo and the solo is basically a vision quest for lack of a better word (laughs) Um, right and so like all through the week they teach because usually you're there for like 10 or 14 days so when you're under 13 you go for 10 days um that's how the traditional camp is that i always knew anyway um so for the first week you're like going on hikes and you're learning about the food and you're learning about safety around the ocean and the fire and then they teach you how to build fires with only three matches. Like it's survival skills, right? Mm-hmm. Um, super outdoorsy survival skills. <laughs> and uh, and then, so for your solo, you get like three matches and your sleeping bag and a potato. So it's almost like a mini fast too. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they kind of arm you up with, with uh, encouragement and stuff like that. And um, before you go, like... <laughs> Yeah, it's so crazy. Like, I And you know, sleep I, out on there on your own as well? And you sleep out by yourself. You build your own shelter. They teach you how to build the shelter. Like, With what know, branches like, are you using? Uh, mostly driftwood for the ones okay. that we were doing. But I have seen some kids were making like moss houses or something. Like mm-hmm. just with a bunch of sticks. And then they just put... Like the moss is like two feet deep, right? So they would right. just like roll it up like a carpet a little, and slap it on your roof. <laughs> a little hobbit hole. <laughs> yeah. So I wrote it about that. Um, wow, I can't wait to read it. <laughs> yeah, it's such a... I don't know. I wrote it. Um, it must have been a couple of years ago now. And uh, I wrote it because I was hearing that kids were having a hard time doing their solos at Rediscovery. Mm. Like a lot of times there would only be a couple of kids that could stay out. And so I just really wanted to encourage them. I wanted to find a way to to plant that little seed for them, right? So that right. if they if they get this book and they hear about this book in like grade one or two, and then, you know, and then the years go by and, and, and at least they have an awareness of it of the solo right so mm-hmm. that by the time they get there and i kind of put in little like teachings that we were taught when we were there about um if we feel lonely and scared that we can call on our ancestors because they're always here with us and they're always 
wanting to guide us and and to help us out and mm. and um and that sort of stuff so i wrote a little bit of that kind of thing in there and um and then i did i i got to bring it to the school here at scott Gunai and and i shared it with all the grades all the all the kids that were there um so yeah that was really wow. fun. that was with jason, jason eagle speaker Mm -hmm. He has Eagle Speaker Publishing, and he, okay. he Eagle cranks. Speaker Publishing. Yeah, there he cranks them out. Um, oh, really? He did like thirty. He did like forty children's books last year with Indigenous hey. authors. Yeah, my dad's amazing. been writing writing books oh, lately. He's looking for a publisher, <laughs> so that would be uh, cool. Yeah. He's been writing children's books, so I'll let him know. That's perfect. Hey, yeah, Eric, I have one question for you, and then one. Perhaps request for a song if you feel like blessing us with your vibrations of your beautiful voice. But um, okay. the question I have for you, this is something that I've been thinking about since I saw you write it. Um, but how do you think, how do you remember and embody your connection to spirit in everything? Remembering and embodying that connection. I mean, you've been talking about that through so many different things, through food, through harvesting, through stories, through relationships. But is there anything else, just especially in this time, in this context, how would you think about that? Yeah, how do you remember it? It's kind of, I guess like it took me, it took me years to develop like to feel that I could feel inner peace and connection and groundedness, like in every moment of my life. <laughs> right. I'm like super chill and like, I don't know, generally a happy person, you know what I mean? And it's it's definitely because of that. Oh, hi, Nora. My sister's threatening me. Is she? Oh, dear. Okay. Sisters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to say hi? Look. There's Moya. Hi. Hi. Yes, yes. Hi. Hello. Okay. Oh, she doesn't want to. Yeah, I think it um, partially had to do a lot. Mama. Okay. Hey, Mama's talking. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sweetie. Oh, you're being a really good girl. You're the best girl. Um, when would it have started? Well, it gets interesting, you know, because when I was a kid. Um, I used to go to the church and I just brought myself there. <laughs> like my parents knew my grandma yeah. and Nani Audrey was there. So they just let me walk over there. It's only like three houses away from my house. And I always used to go to church and like I even remember going home and I was like, Mom, like, we're supposed to go to church. And she's like, No, we're not. <laughs> she, was like, she, told me, she was like, Your our church is in our heart. We don't have to go anywhere. Like we oh. have instant access to the source of creation in our hearts like at every given moment oh. in life and uh and so <laughs> i think i still went to church anyway <laughs> <laughs> you're like yeah but it's nice. quiet here <laughs> yeah yeah and like the feeling you know because like the, all the nannies were there that's all it was when i really? went it was like literally at that time we were lucky and had like a dozen um, elders like old nannies that would go and they were always praying in Haida and mm -hmm. I just loved it like my mom was like harping around about learning language and stuff right and I'm like and this is where we hear it like <laughs> we have to go there <laughs> like this is where I am yeah <laughs> so it's kind of interesting that way um and then I used to go to vacation bible school I almost got baptized it was like <laughs> getting serious <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, Sorry, that's not, but yeah. <laughs> I know, but like, just the way know. you said that really. <laughs> I was so I <laughs> and I asked my mom, I was like, I was like, mom, they're talking to me about being baptized. And she's like, if you want to, like, she just totally made it my decision. She never forced me in any which way to do anything, to believe anything. And uh, she said, it was totally up to me. And I didn't in the end, but um, what I learned, I guess, is is just how to pray and how to. Oh, here's some right here, and for you, there you go. Um, 
especially with the nannies like when you're just little and you're just sitting and listening and watching and um you're just basically they're all role models you know they're all they all um express themselves and a lot of them their prayers were so long right like they just thought of everything mm -hmm. and uh and so i i really always think about those nannies um when i pray too but i mean um it's a struggle like sheesh i had my kids and i hadn't been singing as much and not going to ceremonies as much because there's not as many ceremonies to go to around here anyway <laughs> mm -hmm. you know so um so i really had to like because when i was in victoria and vancouver there's such a huge native spiritual community right mm -hmm. and like you have all these really incredible conversations and connections with people. And then um, mm -hmm. when you come home, there's pot latches, but that's kind of it. Like there's not as much, um, like there's no sweat lodges or Native American church as much, you know what I mean? It's here and there, but it's not like, it's not like every weekend, like you would have access to in, in, in other places. Mm -hmm. um, so I've really literally been depending on myself and my heart to feel connected. Like, I'm like, okay, this is it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, um, and I used to do yoga all the time. Ah, that's one thing I'll, I also miss about the city is the hot yoga. I used mm -hmm. to go to yoga and then I would, um, I was attending like meditation, like Buddhist meditation places in Victoria. Mm -hmm. I just like really like to learn i i really enjoyed um find deloria's book called god is red god is red yes. yeah have you read it i've read parts of it mm -hmm. but i haven't it's read so the good. whole thing yeah i know I, I can't remember where i was traveling to one time and i was in this random airport and i saw it and i was like now is the time because like, <laughs> there's a long airplane i mean that title <laughs> That title and so he talks about would you say native american indigenous cosmology spirituality in the so-called north mm -hmm. well i think he's actually more in the south i think he's a lakota okay. he was a lakota man and um but yeah that's pretty much what he does yeah he talks about like their their way of seeing the world and and then mm -hmm. really contrasts it comparing and contrasting it with um christianity as well and it's mm -hmm. such a powerful tool that way because what i learned in conflict resolution is that like we have to like the those are the biggest conflicts in the world right now and all the time i mean aside from covid 19 um is like generally religious stuff mm -hmm. right like um, and so what i learned there is like we really have to understand the roots of our current problems um mm -hmm. and to me that goes back to to us knowing our own our own spirituality our own cosmology the way that we understand the world to be reality um mm -hmm. yeah like the more that we know ourselves and the more that we understand the others and in this case christianity then um we just learn right it's a better the more understanding we have, the more compassion we have, I think. Mm -hmm. So um, that's just always been something of interest to me, I guess, religious studies. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of always been interesting to me, yeah. I guess probably from that, from when I was a kid and having to make those decisions for myself. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Ask those and big questions from a young age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because my mom was so free to, she always yeah. just explained very thoroughly to me, like, right. Right. whatever I was asking about, and, yeah. Are your daughters, how old are they, and are they asking big questions? Um, my older girl is four. They're, uh, they're just about two years apart, so, and oh then goodness. Nora's two. Yeah, it's really busy. <laughs> Just like me and my sister. Yeah. Four and two. Oh, that's so cute. They're really sweet. Yeah. Are they asking big questions? Not quite yet. Like, um, 
Yeah, I haven't noticed them like really, but they really love to smudge and they really love when I sing and they love um, mm. when I when I bring down my feather fans and they yeah. love to wear their cedar hats. <laughs> it's so cute. Like he just, yeah, it's really funny. And then their dad, he's really involved. Like, thank God for Shane. Um, <laughs> And he's so funny because he, when they were little, he used to like go over to our cedar hat pile and like pick up a hat and put it on, and he'd start singing a song really hard, like holding them singing away. Mm. And they, they would just be like watching him so hard. And then, so now every time they put on their cedar hats, they think they have to sing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is perfect. We got our little potlatch crew. Good job, Shane. <laughs> right. Do you feel like singing a song with us this morning? I could probably do that. Yeah, it'll just take me a second to grab my drum here. Sure. Great. Yeah. It would be lovely. I'll take myself off the screen so we can enjoy <laughs> the full breath of your music. <clears throat> Oy. Oy. Did Jess Kwan sing too? I didn't get to the end of her interview. I can even... Yes, she sang a little bit, but I'd love to get her back on to sing sing and share some more. If you guys ever hang out, we can get you in together. <laughs> that would be so fun. Like just one actually cool? she used to work she worked at Rediscovery when I was a kid. And uh so we got to yeah, I got to learn a lot from her in those times. Yeah. I um yeah, she's definitely been such a good role model for all of us in so mm -hmm. many different ways. And she has the voice of an angel, that lady, so um, Absolutely. Yeah, I, I always looked up to her that way. <laughs> um, I don't even know what we want to sing. Usually I'm like looking at the weather, like how does it feel out there today? It's pretty rainy. It's really rainy. Um, but yeah, I don't know. What kind of song? What do you, what, what mood well, do it's we you, get? It's you who knows. <laughs> they say in Portuguese all the time here, você que sabe, it's you who knows. But you did mention the Wild Man song as being one of the first songs that you that you learned. So any of the music or you know the feast song that your mom shared, like some of the songs that you've shared in the conversation so far. But whatever feels good for you. Okay. Yeah, I wonder. Um, I thought of the rain time song right away. I guess. That makes sense. It is pretty cloudy, rainy here where I am. Is it? Okay. Yeah, there's like a, there's a song, it's like a springtime rain song. A lot of our, a lot of the times that we sing it now, we're, we use it as a, as um as an arrival song in the canoes when you get into a village place and we sing a song to, to let them know that we're there. And, and um so we use it for that quite a bit lately um and the some of the youth canoe trips that have been happening here on Haida um geez I hope it's not too loud I just want I won't drum around too hard I guess <laughs> <laughs> just get it all distorted maybe <clears throat> um so yeah springtime springtime rain song feels feels pretty fitting and I'll just keep all of our gardens in mind because there's so many gardens and we're so lucky to have water because I know there's there's a lot of places around the world that have that have a lack of water and we have been getting into droughts even here on Haida Gwaii in our temperate rainforest we've had um we've had a, like four years of drought or so since I've been here so it's pretty crazy um yeah that was it <clears throat> Hey <laughs> Hayo, 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 yo, hayo, 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 yo, hayo, 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 yo, hayo, 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 yo, hayo, hayo, 
Hayya, 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 yo, hayya, 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 yo, hayya, 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 yo, hayya, yeah. <laughs> Usually we sing four rounds, but I wasn't sure how much. Hi, hi. For that. <laughs> as many rounds as you like. That was such good medicine. <laughs> I'm just here, eyes closed, enjoying. Oh, <laughs> like the grass and the wind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Do you feel like singing any other songs? Yeah, probably could. Might as well while it's feeling good, hey? <clears throat> right? I think we talked so long, my voice is warmed <laughs> up. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, yeah, let's see. What else is going on? Um, <laughs> well, there's just so many, right? Like, there's, like, happy, lighthearted ones, and there's, like, deep, like... Ones. <laughs> um, I don't know what, like, uh, Trent oh, says Eagle Woman. Holy, that's a really fancy song, Trent. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that song. Um, what was I thinking? Sorry, I, I really do like that recommendation. I feel like I might not know all the words to it, um, but I do. I, I learned recently about, um, or actually, I guess it wasn't that recently, six years ago, recent anymore? I don't know. <laughs> I yes. was in Vancouver and I met with Woody Morrison and mm -hmm. we were talking. He asked me what my name was in Haida and I told him my name is um, Gutgoss. And mm -hmm. he said that it is the sound of the waves on the shore and it's the sound of, of gold in the bottom of a pen. And then, mm. he, um, and we talked a little bit about Nora Bellis, um, a nanny from my lineage uh, that I we we share the same name, or she passed away quite a while ago. Um, and she was a singer, and she uh, she used to sing the bear song. And Woody Morrison was telling me that when we carry the same names and. Um, sometimes we have to think of it as we're carrying some of the same responsibilities. So I really like, really liked to hear that. Um, mm -hmm. Like, as I just don't hear that all the time. Like people mm -hmm. know it, but um, our songs have, have been coming back to life um, a lot. Thanks to a lot of really hard, amazing work people are doing in the archives and with like the old mm -hmm. songs and and um and so yeah um so yeah maybe I'll sing oh gosh it makes sense too there was the biggest bear in, in our yard last night like across the street holy smokes well I've there you go I've never seen a bear so big let's sing it before the bear the bear song <laughs> yeah um. Um, yeah, so what is it about? It's usually about, um, there's a dance that goes with it, and then, yeah, so the bear is, like, at the front, and he's walking along and walking along, and then when you hear the part that goes, who, 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 ha, hey, it means they're turning around, and they know that the hunters are, are looking for them, um, <clears throat> and then... Yeah, so it's kind of this, it's this back and forth uh, of a dance between the hunters and the bear. And then at the end, the the bear is, um, gets a spear into its heart. And then, uh, and then there's a second part that goes along with it. And it's, uh, it's like a bear spirit song. And uh, they always, we always have a, a nanny that goes around and they poke the bear with a stick. And they say that that's it makes the bear. You ask this bear spirit to make the bear's body feel light like a feather, so that when the hunters pick it up, it's not too cumbersome. Um, 
And Woody was also telling me that it's so important because if we only sing the first part of the bear song, and nowadays it gets really theatrical <laughs> and uh, and fun and crazy and awesome. And um, he said, we always have to remember to uh, to sing the the second song with it because it because we don't want to only emphasize the death of a bear. I guess, like he said, it's um, the old way would would be to keep them together because um, the second song also helps. It helps like the whole ecosystem of the forest um, to to bring that bear spirit back home into that realm of being one with everything. So I'm really grateful for, for Woody too. And he shares a lot. Oh, if you talk to Woody, that'd be so fun. Um, oh yeah. Okay. So I guess we can actually sing the song. <laughs> um, <clears throat> hi, hi, yeah, hi. Allah. Hi, hi, yeah, hi. Is your heart content? That's so nice. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe how big the bear was last night. I was like, I was sitting on my couch and I'm like, how come there's a light flashing? I thought it was the police. So I was like, hmm, wonder what's going on out there. And I like poked my head out the window and I was like watching and watching because the light just kept moving and stuff. And I was like, oh, this is so weird. And I was hoping it wasn't somebody like breaking into cars or something, whatever. And so I was like really curious and I just sat there and watched. It was like one in the morning. And then... And then finally the light stopped and it was shining in this one place. And then out of the darkness and in, into the light is the biggest bear I've ever seen. It just like Jeez. walled straight out and they're so quiet. Hey? What kind of bear? Like it had taken garbage out of my... There, we have a subspecies of black bears here. Okay. Um, so they're, the, they're like the tallest black bears in the world because they they genetically like got modified from all the naturally though from the um from when the ice age was here and for Jeez. some reason that caused the bears to to grow longer legs so they stand really tall they're not like super fat but this one was actually it was pretty big and round i was like holy smokes um what's so the height of word for something. bear but some people say it's hard right some people say it's such a blessing <laughs> it's such a blessing to like see wildlife <laughs> yeah well absolutely um, what bear here is ton ton i've heard that a few times ton. yeah like t-a-a-n mm. what a beautiful beautiful song it kind of took me into a trance <laughs> just listening to your to your voice thank you so (laughs) much for sharing you're so welcome yeah you've been having some other folks are saying thank you as well when i was a kid sorry go ahead oh you're so welcome yeah thank you everybody for tuning in it's been so nice i remember being a little kid and and uh at the pot latches like you're supposed to sit there so quiet and still, right? Like we never did anyways, like we're always running around. But um, but as soon as the dancers would come out, oh man, kids didn't even move a muscle. <laughs> like as soon as the drums started, like if you were outside and you heard somebody start singing or you heard the drums going, you're just like booking it into the, <laughs> into the hall. Of course. And then all the kids like sit around the perimeter. You don't have to sit by your parents for a minute. Like you're allowed to go and sit like on the floor and like watch and yeah. Oh man, so fun. So I was really lucky that way too that at least we were are getting our potlatching system back up and running back off on its feet. And I actually, I got to go to Bella Bella too. Like in, when was that? October, I think they had a huge um longhouse opening there yeah and it's so incredible it was just amazing and the most beautiful thing i saw like they they um were standing they they were acknowledging all these people right they're like lifting up all these people and talking about all the work that had to be done um Mm. in order to build this huge longhouse for their people to potlatch in and then they were like and we did all of this like for the kids and they wanted the kids to be like some of the first dancers on the floor like once it Mm -hmm. all looked all beautiful the fire was like roaring and you know the sand fireplace and and they wanted the kids to they said it was for the children and i was like oh man that's so amazing like i need to do that for my children (laughs) even if it's just Mm -hmm. a small one you know to start (laughs) that's beautiful yeah i remember yeah, i was so i was interviewing i was interviewing nusi ian reed who was one of the main Jeez. carvers yeah before and he was talking about that. he was talking about for me you know he was talking about a lot of people who put their energy and their work into that big house opening weren't paid right in the way that you think about being paid in the western world but he said the payment for me, his words just really stuck with me, is going to be my son experiencing this opening and having the next generation being alive to experience our culture in the fullest. And I thought that was so powerful. So it's amazing that you were there for that moment with your neighbors. Mm-hmm. 
I know. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah, he did such an incredible job. Like, wow. Um, I can't believe that. You don't even hear about that very much anymore, about people carving just from their heart, just to give Oof. such a huge gift. That's, yeah. I follow mm -hmm. him on Instagram. He's my favorite. <laughs> To summarize, I do too. It's, it's like, wonderful. Hey, Nacy. <laughs> like, yeah. There's some really yeah. awesome people. You're totally included in that group. You know, you're a mom, you're a traditional language singer, you're a knowledge carrier, you know, a student of your culture, very humble, you know. So it's just been such a privilege to, to hear from you this morning and that you've taken the time to join us and share some songs so and. and Good vibrations, but in the realest sense. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're so welcome. I'm so glad that you uh, that you asked me to be part of it too. I, I was like, this is going to be my favorite because we don't really have a script, and I just kind of like to be all over the place anyway. So, yeah, that's so fun. No, and how went to James too, James McGuire, uh, for for kind of basically cyber introducing yeah. me to you roundabout. He was just like, just talk to her. I'm like, okay. <laughs> awesome so, yeah we're all yeah. getting connected we're all we're all in this together yeah this is such a great platform now i'm gonna have to scroll through and like really listen to people too that's like this is so fun oh. hi little little that's my Nora. oh she's getting oh hi, so friends. Cool. yeah <laughs> i'll give your mom back now thank you for your time yeah, you're welcome to join us so anytime how is so much? Hi, hi. Take care. Talk soon. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>